give an honor to God who is the head of my house. And I want to tell you that this is a celebration. Michael is at peace, he's at rest, it's no more pain, it's no more worries, it's no more nothing. I mean, he's walking around heaven, dancing around heaven, and I'm trying to get to where he is. Okay, so to the family of Gloria Johnson, on behalf of Michael, please accept our heartfelt condolences. And although words can heal the pain of losing someone so dear, may God give you the strength to overcome this and just knowing that you are in our thoughts and prayers. As we celebrate Michael's homecoming today, remember that death is not an end, but a transition to a place free of pain and suffering. Mm -hmm. The Word of God reminds us in 2 Timothy 4, 7 through 8. I have fought a good fight. Finish the course. I have kept the faith. Henceforth, there is laid up for me a at that day, and not to me only, but unto all them also that loves his appearing. Michael is God's dear child, and God called him to heaven. In doing so, God has freed Michael from all the worldly pain and suffering. Please take the sauce and know that your son Michael is now in a happier place. With loving prayers, the Baker family, Kansas City, Kansas. And uh, yeah, Aunt Eddie Wilson, Aunt Shirley Douglas, Aunt Claudette Briggs, Uncle Clark Baker, siblings of the late great grandmother, <coughs> Frida Mae Baker, and your late maternal mother, Frida Mae Johnson. I guess, well, I wasn't given the cards, so I don't know what, what to say besides. Um, <coughs> Michael would want us all to be like happy. Mm -hmm. Michael was a very, very loving, kind, humble person that cared about his parents and cared so much about people. Even when I was in California, I went to California and went through my little illness there. And uh, Michael kept me. Michael came to California to see about me. And uh, his mom did too, several times. All I want to say is that I knew Michael since he was a little bit boy. And he was always had so much pride. I mean, all through his sickness, he never complained. He knew his friends, playing, he would get sick. They didn't know what was going on. Mike, are you okay? I'm fine, I'm fine. He would just jump in the pool, just do whatever, everything. play football, I'm like, oh Jesus, please don't let him tap him. And he can tap him, he can get up, like, I'm like, I hope you okay. Uh, he did not want no one feeling sorry for him. And he did not want no pity, no self-pity whatsoever. Michael was the strongest, sickest child I ever met in my life to have so much strength. I mean, I love him. And I'm just glad that he is not having no more pain. He's not suffering no more. Like I said, I want to get to where he's at. So, my name is Christopher Wells, and I have been blessed to be able to be Michael's first cousin. Uh, somehow I ended up just before him in birth rights, but he has been such an inspiration to not only me, but all of us throughout our life. And I really feel honored to have an opportunity to share some experiences and share some insight as to how wonderful a person that he really is. When I when I think about my cousin Michael, I, I you see a lot of us folks up there. And we uh, were like two peas in the pot. If you know our side of the family, there were many cousins older than us, many cousins younger than us, but it was us too. And uh, that built a really strong bond between the two of us. It was really interesting because growing up, we spent a whole lot of time together. And he would always um, be right behind me. And, and, and whatever I was into, he was into. Uh, some good, some bad. So I could get some credit for some of the bad habits, some of the good habits as well. But 
regardless, he, he, he was just a young man of impeccable strength and someone that we all can learn from. Whenever you are going through something in life, whether it be unemployment, whether it be sickness, whether it be sadness, whether it be mental illness, whatever you're going through in life, unemployment, whatever that may be, you know, you always want to step back and just realize that, you know, in this life we live, we're not guaranteed um, an easy life, we're not guaranteed a, a, a straight road, but what we can learn from life is uh, perseverance, what we can learn from life is consistency, what we can learn from life is not complaining and doing what needs to be done. He looked up to me for some reason, I'm still trying to figure that out, and maybe it was due to some of the merit accomplishments, maybe it was due to some of the physical gifts, but I looked up to him because of the size of his heart and how courageous he was. He and I used to have a little joke. He would be mad at telling you guys in public. But I'm, I'm saying, I don't understand how God could fit the heart of a lion in the chest of a snapping turtle. <laughs> and he would look at me and say, shut up. If you know my like, like, But that's the truth. I mean, such a strong person at 150 pounds. And, and, and there was nothing that we would do me or any of his friends and family that he wasn't up for as well, regardless of how he was feeling. Um, and he's just somebody that we can really um, look back and, and also look forward where in which we realize that you know his life has been an inspiration to all of us. And his spirit will always remain and we know he's with God. There's no question about that. I was there with him um, on the 24th that evening. And uh, you know, uh, when I came into the room, you know, he, he, he was already on the minimum. But, just a testament of strength, when I came into the room, he sat up. And it was almost like he was trying to give me a hug. You know, and he was fighting. He was fighting that grandma because he wanted to greet him, and he wanted to be who he is, which if you know him, regardless of the situation or circumstance, that ain't what it's about for him. So as I got in the room, I just wanted him to relax. And, you know, he, he was moving around and you know he was uncomfortable, but he, you could tell he just wanted to say, what's up? You know, and uh, I got closer to my husband, he laid on my shoulder, and he relaxed. I had a chance to pray with him. I had a chance to tell him how proud I was of him. Did the sinner's prayer with him. And he was there. As I wiped about three tears from his eyes, he was there. Couldn't, couldn't necessarily engage. It was a one-sided conversation. I know half the time, I don't tell him to shut up. But, you know, he was there. Very much so present. And I feel blessed to have been able to share that moment with him. I also feel blessed that, you know, in that time, he called uh, to reach out and, and made sure that we had a chance to spend some time together. You know, this time, um, There's something in particular that I want to say. <laughs> due, due to this, we all know, um, you know, uh, again, as I mentioned, Mike is an inspiration to all of us, and he's, he's experienced a great life, but also he experienced a lot of pain. And then and he knew, um, he knew what, what he had going on. And I was always going, like, Mike, man, why'd you want to make it? And he would never answer me. The one thing he's like, oh, 24 hour things. Do the math on that, ladies and gentlemen. Really do the math on that. I mean, you know, it's a little sharp in the average spirit world, but she realized that he wanted to maximize the life that he had. You know, and um, you know, again, he's just been a blessing and inspiration to me and all of us. And I'm just going to kind of wrap it up and say, um, I think we should all be aware that Mike is in a place right now that we are aspiring to get to. 